The movie begins amid the war between the Bosnian army and the Croat forces. A few displaced Bosniak soldiers traverse a foggy area in the middle of the night. Though able to rest, their guide prohibits them from smoking to avoid detection from enemies. The men talk amongst themselves and complain about their plight. Confirming that the coast is clear, the men sleep until dawn. However, when they awaken, they soon realize they have crossed no man's land upon seeing a Serbian militant flag. Bosnian soldiers kill most of the men on sight, leaving the rest wounded in the trenches. The Bosnian troops watch from a distance as their relief squad falls, with the commander alerting HQ of the situation. Unbeknownst to them, the Bosniak soldier, Siki, survives with a wound on his shoulder. Meanwhile, the Serbian officer asks for a volunteer in his unit to survey the middle of the trench and locate survivors. He entrusts the task to his second-in-command and a new recruit, Nino, who has never been in combat. He tells the men to return to the base around nightfall to avoid conflict. Soon after, Siki makes his way to cross the other side of the trenches, carefully hiding behind the bushes so that he does not get spotted. Though injured, he arms himself with a rifle and prepares to defend himself from invaders. After enjoying a smoke, he tries to locate some supplies inside the fort. Suddenly, he hears a noise and sees the two Serbian soldiers breaching inside the trench. He immediately hides inside and arms himself with a combat knife as they look around. The men search the room but leave immediately after confirming it is empty. Siki steps out and quietly grabs the rifle before returning inside the fort. The lead Serbian officer rummages through one of the dead soldier's belongings and presents Nino with a bouncing mine, explaining how the enemy can trigger it to explode. He demonstrates its power by digging the mine underground and laying the dead body on top, confirming it has triggered the pin. Nino is ordered to pull the wire but is too cowardly to perform the task. With the booby trap set, the men are put to rest for the night until they discover weapons are lying around in the area. Siki opens fire, killing the officer but sparing Nino despite shooting him in the waist. He then grabs his bag and removes a bandage to cover his wound. He asks Nino for directions to leave the trench in exchange for some gauze, but the young soldier insists, knowing nothing about the layout of the land. Fearing he will detonate mines if he escapes, he looks through the pockets of the dead soldier but finds nothing useful. He asks the wounded Nino for a map, but when he discovers he is not carrying anything, he orders him to strip naked and walk on the sides of the trench waving a white towel to signal his surrender. With no update from the two soldiers, the Serbian line fires an artillery strike at the trenches to incite conflict against the Bosnian flank, forcing Tsiki and Nino to hide inside the fort. They trade insults while waiting for a ceasefire, blaming each other's side for the casualties and consequences of the civil war. Nino relents and confesses that the Serbians started the war. Meanwhile, the Bosnian commander becomes confused with the Serbs' retaliation and reports to HQ. Soon after, the rival soldiers step outside to plan their escape when they discover another wounded Bosniak soldier, Sarah, awaking from unconsciousness but lying down under the booby trap mine constructed earlier by the fallen Serbian officer. Siki demands Nino disarm the bomb, but the naive soldier insists he will endanger their lives if he attempts to do so. Though the Bosniaks contemplate killing him, Siki hesitates, believing he can assist in their survival inside the trench. However, as he provides water to Sarah, Nino grabs another rifle and holds him at gunpoint, demanding they wait until dark and forcing him to admit the Bosniak started the conflict. Sarah asks him for a cigarette, but as Nino bends down to place it in his mouth, he grabs the naive soldier, threatening to kill them both by triggering the mine. Finding common ground to avoid escalating the situation, the able-bodied soldiers share a temporary truce and keep their rifles in check. Though uneasy with their alliance, they carefully place the bag under Sarah's head to aid him. Later, the soldiers strip down to their underwear and wave a white cloth to signal for help from their respective factions. Afterward, Nino tries to be friendly and introduces himself, but Siki refuses to socialize. Soon after, the United Nations Protection Force, UNPROFOR, in Sarajevo gets involved with the conflict when soldiers from the French army, designated as Arizona II, are alerted by their commanding officer at the base. One of the officers, Sergeant Marchand, grows tired of waiting and decides to head into the battlefield and rescue survivors, ignoring orders to stand by their post. Meanwhile, Sarah fears dying if the bomb underneath him sets off, but Siki assures him he will stay with him until the end. A while later, the Upper Force Arizona II arrive outside the barricade of the Serbian army, where Sergeant Marchand communicates in English to explain why they are crossing the border. Unfortunately, none of the soldiers understand him. However, the commanding officer helps point out the location of the men in the trenches when shown the map of the area. With the details somewhat sorted out, the French army gets cleared to pass through without issue. Meanwhile, Siki and Nino make amends and discuss their war experiences. The two men become surprised, discovering they are acquainted with the same blonde woman from Banja Luka. 
Nino tells him the woman relocated overseas to flee from the country. Sometime later, the Arizona 2 unit arrives at the checkpoint of the Bosnian Border Patrol, who do not hesitate to let the pass since they are a neutral party in the conflict. Meanwhile, Sarajevo's Captain Dubois informs Colonel Soft in the Umprefor Zagreb headquarters about sending British troops to deal with the no man's land issue. However, the colonel admits he is powerless to decide on the matter without the approval of the General Assembly of the United Nations. The men slowly lose hope of rescue in the trench until Arizona 2 appears. Though there are language barriers, Siki and Nino try to explain to Sergeant Marchand about the booby trap mine stuck underneath Sarah, hoping they can alleviate the matter. The sergeant immediately radios for a mine squad to detonate the bomb, but the commanding officer at headquarters orders his unit to pull out of the area in five minutes or get arrested by the United Nations police. As the French army prepares to leave, Nino insists on coming with them, only to get shot in the leg by Tsiki, who demands he stays to prevent the other side from attacking. As he screams in pain, he threatens to kill him when they get out, but Tsiki is too focused on devising a plan than listening to his tirade. Meanwhile, the French army is about to get out of the Bosnian border when they get cornered by Global News British reporter Jane Livingston, who is documenting the war effort. Speaking in French, Jane pressures Sergeant Marchand to divulge the truth about the situation in no man's land by letting her talk directly to the upper force Captain Dubois. Unfortunately, he denies any wrongdoing by pulling out his troops and claims negotiations are underway to solve the issue. Since most of the information is withheld, Jane warns him that she will continue to cover the story and publicly humiliate the Unprefor with her report while waiting for a straightforward solution to the matter at no man's land. Soon after, the news report airs on TV, prompting Colonel Soft to act and request air transport for Bosnia. A special report airs right after, detailing the Bosnian Serb paramilitary causing chaos in the inner cities, with the actions referred to as ethnical cleansing. The reporter adds that the UN Security Council sent 9,000 troops to Bosnia. However, the conflict escalated further even with the French president's opening of Sarajevo airport to allow humanitarian aid. The news report ends with the reporter confirming three soldiers trapped in no man's land waiting for Uprafor's decision for support. Not long after airing the news story, Sergeant Marchand and his team are given permission to return to no man's land, leaving Jane and her crew to wait for orders from the mine expert. The army arrives to stop Nino from stabbing Tsiki with a knife. Tensions are high as the French sergeant tries to calm everyone down by announcing a bomb squad is coming. Sarah cries out of fear while Tsiki and Nino get medical attention. Sergeant Marchand returns to the checkpoint to speak with Captain Dubois about the situation, with the captain permitting Jane's film crew to document everything at no man's land. Facing the media, the sergeant explains the complications of the mine trapping one of the men, hoping the crew will abide by the rules and observe caution. Upon arriving at the site, Jane asks permission to interview the men, offering Nino a cigarette to loosen his lips. Though he agrees to answer her queries, he flips his middle finger when asked if he placed the mine underneath Sarah. Filled with hate, Siki expresses to Sarah his regret for not killing Nino when he had the chance. Later, he secretly hides the combat knife inside his sock, preparing to exact his revenge immediately. Sergeant Marchand appears, telling the men to clear out while the UN mine expert disables the bomb, though Tsiki hesitates, ignoring Nino's translations. He eventually relents, promising Sarah, he will wait nearby. Meanwhile, Jane does a live report showing the two soldiers escorted out of the trench. The producer at the news bureau calls, asking her to interview Sarah while he is being rescued while also getting the two rival soldiers' statements. The moment arrives when the mine expert prepares his equipment and carefully tries to locate the bomb underneath Sarah. Sergeant Marchand helps by showing him the untouched bouncing mine, only to receive ill news that he cannot deactivate the mechanism due to its design. Suddenly, Colonel Soft arrives at the scene via helicopter and is immediately bombarded by questions from the media. Meanwhile, Siki quietly grabs a pistol from a dead soldier while the crowd is distracted. The colonel ends his statements by saying the Unprefor is perfectly capable of controlling the situation. Captain Dubois approaches, telling him there's nothing they can do for Sarah with the mine impossible to defuse. Colonel Soft knows this fiasco will ruin their reputation, so he orders the mine expert to return to the trench and pretend while the cameras roll. The man sits wearily beside Sarah, who is staring at a photo of his wife. While Captain Dubois addresses reporters, Siki points the gun at Nino while ranting about getting the plight publicized by the media. Before Nino can grab a firearm, Siki fatally shoots him before falling to his death when a UN peacekeeper fires at him. Everyone watches in horror as the two men lie dead in front of all the cameras. Realizing there is no recovery, Colonel Soft reconvenes with Captain Dubois with a new plan. Before Sergeant Marchand can console the shooter, the captain informs him the bomb has been defused and that they must clear out immediately, bringing the dead soldiers' bodies with them. 
The colonel confronts Jane and the reporters, saying that Sarah has been saved by airlifted in critical condition. However, as everyone leaves the scene, the statement is proven false as Marchand discovers Sarah still in the trenches. Still, he is forced to keep everything under wraps. Meanwhile, the cameraman asks if he will need to film inside the no man's land, but Jane disagrees. The movie ends at sunset, as Sarah contemplates being left alone to die. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this to help the channel out. Have a nice day.